Okay. Isn't it amazing that God in His grace and mercy has said anybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus can have their sins forgiven. Anybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus, no matter what the color of their skin, no matter what place in the world they live in, no matter what their economic status is, no matter what their personality trait is, the Bible says anybody can put their faith and trust in Jesus. And when they do, the Bible says they're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They're sealed by the Holy Spirit for an inheritance which is reserved in heaven for them. They're made alive in Jesus. Their sins are forgiven. And one day they will spend eternity in heaven. Isn't that amazing? I'm so thankful for God's grace and mercy and what he's done for us. Today we're going to jump into the book of Ephesians chapter 3. See more of that grace and mercy. Do you have your Bibles with you? Okay. Hold them up. Repeat after me. This is the word of God. It's more powerful than a two-edged sword. And I love the word of God. Father, we thank you today for your word. Use it to speak to us clearly so that we can go farther and deeper in our love for you. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles and open up to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. If you don't have a Bible, there should be one. Anybody need a Bible that doesn't have one? There should be one underneath if you want one. Okay? can help somebody out if they need it. Ephesians chapter 3. If you've never worked in a Bible, never used a Bible, it's really pretty simple. The very beginning, like any book, there's a table of contents. You look at the table of contents, you find the Old Testament, the New Testament. You go to the New Testament and look for the book of Ephesians, and that's where we are in the book of Ephesians. And we're in chapter 3. If you find chapter 1, you're getting close. If you find chapter 2, you're getting close. And chapter 3 is where we are, chapter 3, Ephesians. If you're there, say, I'm there. I'm there. All right. I'm going to read the first 13 verses, and then we're going to unpack them. First 13 verses. Here we go. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it has been now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promised in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery for which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places that was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in order in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. Okay. Now, isn't it amazing sometimes you can read 12 verses and go, what does that mean? Because... There's so much there. What we're going to do today is we're going to unpack those a little bit to help us understand them so that you can see exactly what Paul is saying. You ready? We'll start here at the beginning. 
Paul says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, of Jesus Christ. I, Paul, the prisoner. I'm going to start off with a question today. Do you realize or did you realize that when Paul wrote this, he was in prison? Okay. When Paul wrote this book, he was in prison. Now, not like a prison like we would think, like Mule Creek, okay, which isn't too far from us. Not like that type of prison, but a modified prison in a sense. Paul was in prison in a house, in a home. He was not allowed out. He was on lockdown. And he was chained to a Roman soldier. He wasn't allowed to go anywhere without that Roman soldier being next to him because he was not allowed out of that house. Okay? Now, we might understand a little bit about what that's like because we've heard about lockdowns, right? Okay, in the world that we live in. We've even heard about hard lockdowns. You know what a hard lockdown is? A hard lockdown is, and they did this in Australia right before the French, or excuse me, the Australian Open Tennis Tournament. A hard lockdown is this. When the tennis players flew in to play in that tennis tournament, they had to go into their hotel room for 14 days. They could not leave. They could not walk outside. They could not go in the hallway. They were on hard lockdown for 14 days. So hard lockdown means you can't leave. You can't go out of your house. Food's going to be brought to you. It's not, you don't go out to the store and get it. So Paul was on a hard lockdown. And he was chained to a Roman soldier. And you know what got him in this situation? Anybody have any idea? What got him in? What got him in the situation, Steve? Ah, what got him there was the preaching of this mystery. What got Paul in this situation is, as he says here, he says, there was made known to me the mystery. What in the world is Paul talking about? He said, there's this mystery that I was preaching. He said, it's a mystery that has not been revealed to previous generations. It was a mystery that had been kept secret, Paul says, until now. He says, now this mystery has been revealed. Now, it's kind of interesting. If you look back in biblical history, you'll see that there are some mysteries that God never reveals. They are permanent secrets. In fact, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says that they are called the secret things of God. The secret things belong to the Lord. So for some reason, God lets us know that there are some things that no one will ever know in this life. No person has ever known. They are the secret things of God. Now, they're either too complex, too fearful, too private, or for some reason, God has said, nobody's going to know. Some things are secret. God will not reveal them. And then there are some secrets, some mysteries the Bible talks about that are revealed to special people. Think back for a minute. Think in the Old Testament, for a matter of fact, and see if you can think of a person in the Old Testament who had a secret revealed to them that nobody else knew. So, so in the Old Testament, there were mysteries or secrets that were revealed to certain people, right? What Paul says, he says, but this mystery that he's talking about is not one of those permanent secrets. It's also not a secret that's just revealed to a certain person. But he said, this is a mystery that has been revealed to us, to the church age, to those people who know Jesus. He said, God has revealed this mystery to me, 
And my job is to communicate that mystery to you. So we have to ask ourselves a question. What is this mystery? Okay, now think about this. Here's an interesting reality. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. This is to your right just a little bit. 1 Peter is a small book. Because what's interesting in these verses that we're going to see is that there were people in the Old Testament that God inspired to write, and they didn't even have any idea what they were writing. They wanted to know, what's this secret? What's this mystery I'm writing about? Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 10. It says, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied in the grace that would come to you made careful search and inquiry, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you in these things, which have now been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. So in other words, the prophets in the Old Testament, God inspired them to write some things, and as they wrote them, guess what they were doing? Trying to figure out, what is it? What is this that I'm writing? What is it having to do? When's Jesus going to get? What is it? So there are mysteries that are secret. There are mysteries that were revealed to people in the Old Testament. There were mysteries in some of these prophets who wrote them. They didn't even understand all that they were writing about, did they? And then there's this mystery that Paul says, God has revealed it to me. What is the mystery? Okay. Well, we just read what the mystery was. Let's read it again and see if you can tell me. What is the mystery? Chapter 3. If indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men. That's what we just said, right? As it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit. To be specific, there's a clue, huh? To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. Ah, okay, now see if you can tell me. What is the mystery? Okay. Okay, here's the mystery that nobody knew before the New Testament, he says, that the Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? Okay, people who aren't Jewish, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body, what does that mean, of the body? The church, the body of Christ, and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What's the promise? Heaven. 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 So Paul says, you know what? God reveals to me a mystery that has never been revealed before. Even in the Old Testament, nobody knew this. And here's the mystery. That in Jesus Christ, anybody who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, whether they're a Jewish person or a Gentile person, they get to share in the kingdom of heaven together. Amen. Wow. You know, think about that. Paul, he says, it was revealed to me and who am I? Because remember Paul, his name used to be what? Saul. Saul and Saul he hated Christ's followers, didn't he? In fact, if Saul were to walk into this room today, he'd go, oh, good, we got a bunch of Christ followers. Let's get them all out of here and send them to jail. In fact, let's beat a few out in the parking lot. I hate them that bad. That's who Saul was, huh? But God got a hold of his life on the road to Damascus, changed his name to Paul and said, Paul, 
Now that you know who I am, now that you know that Jesus is real, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go tell everybody in the Gentile world the good news of Jesus. And I also want you to start churches wherever you go. And so wherever Paul went, he started churches. And guess who was in these churches? Christ followers that were Jews and Gentiles. And they joined together and they both, nobody looked at each other as a Jew or Gentile. They just said, hey, we love Jesus. We're Christ followers. There's a mystery, God says, that has never been revealed that anybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus, it doesn't matter whether they're a Jew or whether they're a Gentile, they share in the good news in the body of Christ. And when they get to heaven, they will all be in the same place. There's no difference between the two. Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he wrote to the Galatians, he wrote to the Colossians, telling them the same thing. There's a mystery. Anybody who loves Jesus is one in the body of Christ and gets to make it to heaven. He preached to everybody. He wrote a letter to the Romans. He said, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, it doesn't matter if you're a Gentile, Jesus is the only way. We kind of talked about that this morning, huh? Because Linda had that question. Jesus is the only way. Paul continued to preach that. He wanted people to know that the Old Testament law, because the Old Testament said in order to be a follower of God, you had to be circumcised. You had to follow the law. Paul came along and said, no, 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 no more. No more. Now you just got to trust Jesus. Set those other things aside. Just trust Jesus. And as Paul continued to preach that, he got a reputation. His reputation was, who is this guy who's telling people that they can get into heaven without being circumcised and doing all the Jewish law. Who does he think he is? People started to look at him like, you are crazy. But Paul says, wait, the mystery was revealed to me. God showed it to me that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what color of your skin, no matter what you believe, no matter how much money you make, that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you can make it to heaven. God revealed that to him. It wasn't a human thing. He didn't make it up to say, hey, it was God who revealed that to him. And he wants you and I to understand that, that anybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus gets to make it to heaven. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to go through all the Mosaic law and ceremonies. You don't have to go to church and give lots of money and say the right prayers. What you need to do is put your faith and trust in Jesus. Anybody, Paul said, could be saved. He says, I want you to understand this mystery. That's what took Paul and put him in prison. Because people didn't like what he was saying. Nobody liked that reality. And so he ended up where he was in that picture. Now, as Paul writes this, there's an important underlying truth that he wants everybody to know. This mystery that says everybody can put their faith and trust in Jesus, and they all become a part of the body of Christ. You know what that brings? It brings unity, doesn't it? It brings unity. No longer is there separation. No longer is there Jews and Gentiles. But now what are they? They're Christ followers, aren't they? They're one in the body of Christ. God begins to change all people, make them into new creatures, doesn't he? Changes them from the inside out. I mean, there's a lot of people in this room today who have trusted Jesus. And have you seen God change you from the inside out? Isn't it amazing? Some of the things that you used to go, man, I really want that. Your flesh wants it. What happens? You go, nope, I'm not going to do that. Even though your flesh wants it. You go, how come that happens? Well, it's because God is changing you, huh? He's taking you farther and farther away from sin. Because as a person puts their faith and trust in Jesus, it brings unity. It brings freedom. No longer are you a slave to what? Sin. But you are free in Jesus Christ. How many people would allow, rather live in freedom? Me, right? How many people want to live in slavery? No. Nobody wants to live in slavery. 
We want to live in unity. And that's exactly what Paul is talking about. There is unity that happens when a person puts faith in Jesus Christ. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news that everybody needs to hear, especially in 2021. Because in 2021, the exact opposite is being talked about. Because you see, when we hear the word unity today, and we hear it from many people in governmental leadership, we want to bring unity. But I got to tell you, the unity that they're talking about is exactly the opposite kind of unity that Paul just talks about. They tell us that it's only possible to have this unity if we forget all that we've ever known in our life. We leave all of it behind. We change the past and we come into a new future. Unity, according to what we're hearing today, comes from tearing down things and not building up things. It doesn't come from Jesus and a changed heart. What we hear today is unity comes from a strong government. And if you worship the government and believe what they say, unity will happen. We hear that unity only comes when those who have white colored skin and who are racists and the oppressors, when they make reparations to those who have dark skin. That will bring unity. And then it seems like this oppressiveness, there's some kind of competition to be the most oppressed person in the room, huh? Who has the darkest skin? Who's more gay? Who's more transsexual? Who's bisexual? Because the more of those you have, the more oppressed you are. And the more oppressed you are, the more reparations you need. And that will bring more unity. That's what is being talked about in the world that we live in. If you have a different thought, that thought is suppressed. And that brings unity. You know, the reality is, is that going to bring unity? Absolutely not. It brings disunity and division. That's why the world needs to hear what Paul is talking about, about this mystery. Because unity comes through Jesus Christ. We're one in Christ. When a person comes a, becomes a Christ follower, there's unity between them and God because their sins are forgiven, aren't they? No longer are they strangers, but they are welcomed into the family of God. Their sins are forgiven. They're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and they're on their way to heaven. It doesn't matter what color skin you have. My skin's darker than most of you in this room. But you know what? I don't even care. It doesn't make a difference, does it? Because we're one in the body of Christ. Skin color doesn't matter. Love you. That's good. Still love me. I still love you. There's no division, huh? It doesn't matter how much money you make because I know there's people in this room that make much more money than I do. But you know what? That doesn't matter. There's people who live in bigger houses who drive nicer cars. There's people who live in lesser houses and not as nice cars. But that doesn't matter because we're one in the body of Christ. What matters is that we put our faith and trust in Jesus. And that's what brings unity. See, Paul in chapter 3 is just making it very clear to every one of us sitting in this room, everyone who has ever walked on this planet, that you need Jesus. Jesus is who's going to change you from the inside out. Jesus is going to make a difference in your life. Jesus wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him forever. And that's the amazing mercy and grace that Paul is talking about when he says this mystery has never been revealed before. Now it's been revealed to me. And Paul's now going throughout the world and telling people, trust Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Put your faith and trust in Jesus, not in church, not in religion. Set those things aside. And that's exactly what our world needs to hear today, isn't it? There may be people, as we talked about with Linda's question, that live next to you that have been thinking about who God is, wondering about what's going on in the world, looking outside at the moon at night and going, man, this is amazing. There's got to be more to life than what's going on here. 
and you're their next door neighbor. Guess what? God is saying to us, hey, just talk to your neighbor. Just ask them some questions. Hey, have you ever heard this verse from the Bible? Hey, what do you think about heaven and hell? Do you believe there's a God? Do you know that you can have your sins forgiven by putting your faith and trust in Jesus? Just ask questions. And it's amazing what God can do. The reality today in 2021 is Kim, Brian, Barbara, Franco, Robert, each and every one of us in here, we have an important mission that God has given us. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. You know what's amazing is we don't have to go far to go into all the world, do we? We got to go to our next door neighbor across the street. You got to go to Walmart. Got to go to Costless. Wherever you go, the world is right there. And if there's anything the world needs in 2021, it's to know that there's hope in Jesus. Hope doesn't come from the government of the United States of America. Hope doesn't come from a stimulus check that you're going to get in the mail. Hope doesn't come from a bill like we just saw. Hope comes in Jesus. And unity comes in Jesus. So for all of us sitting here today, the mystery has been revealed to us. At this time and this place, God has trusted us with this mystery to take it just like Paul did to the people that we come in contact with. So glad that God has changed my life. If it wasn't for that, I don't know where I'd be. He changed me from the inside out. I know he's changed many of our lives from the inside out. And what a difference it can be if he changes your neighbor's life. And then your neighbor talks to their son or daughter and changes their life. And it continues on. How amazing it is. We have to just be reminded in this crazy mixed up world, there's a reason we are here. The reason we are here is to share Jesus. Bottom line. That's it. Just talk to people about Jesus. Let God do the rest. What a privilege we have to have the word. And I'm so excited for each and every one of you because I know you're getting stronger, more courageous, more bold, and what an example you are to the people that you're living with. So I just encourage you, keep on going, never give up, and let's take that good news to everybody that we know. Father, we thank you for our morning today. Thank you for the privilege that we have to open up the word, to see this amazing mystery that has been revealed, as Paul said, the mystery that there is hope in Jesus, that Jew and Gentile can be one in the body of Christ. And what a privilege that as we sit here today, that we who have put our faith and trust in Jesus can know that there is eternity in heaven. But maybe there's somebody here who's never trusted Jesus. Maybe you're here today and God's been speaking to your heart and you can kind of sense that right now where you are. Something's going on. Well, that's God speaking to your heart and saying, you know what? I want you to know I love you. I want you to know that you're valuable to me. I want you to know that I want you to trust Jesus. So if you're sitting here today and you feel like God's talking to your heart, just tell God in your own words, God, I'm sorry for my sin. I've done some bad things. I'm sorry for that. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross, this amazing mystery that he died on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. And today, on this last day of February, today, Jesus, I invite you to come into my life. Be my savior. I get out of the driver's seat of my life and I put you there. Abba Father, we thank you for that privilege that our sins could be forgiven. Everybody's head bowed, eyes closed. If, if today God was speaking to your heart and you said, you know what? I just prayed and asked Jesus to be my Savior. I don't know all that that means, but God was speaking to me. I want to pray for you before you go. So do me a favor. Everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. If you just prayed and asked Jesus into your life, look at me. Make good eye contact with me right now. And I'm just going to pray for you. Just look at my eyes and say, yep, that was me. That was me. I just asked Jesus to be my Savior. Never done that before. Anybody? Father, thank you for our day today. Pray for all of us as Christ followers 
that as we leave this place, we will be strong in you and the strength of your might, that we will abide in the vine like we never have before. That you can speak through us in this crazy, mixed-up world. That the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be honoring to you. We don't know how many people are around us that may be seeking, looking, asking questions. And we might be living right next door to them. Use us and make us bold to stand up for truth and righteousness. Again, we thank you for your word. And may we as your children make an impact in the world that we live in today. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.